Hello, I think we are live. Um, so if you have tuned in, um, so just to see if everything is working, if you can just give me a quick hello into comments field, maybe also like hello from, so that I can see uh, from where you people are basically tuning in. Uh, that would be great because then I at least know that uh, we are actually streaming. So because this is still weird for me that you just click live and then it shows live, but I'm not hundred percent always not hundred percent sure if it's actually visible to everyone. But I'm hoping that everything looks good at least. So when you're watching, just put some quick... Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Eddie is always very good. Hi, Eddie. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, so, um, excellent. So, at least um, this looks good. So, we don't... Excellent. We don't really... Uh, we don't want to really... Uh, take too much time into introduction because we have a lot to cover today and so uh, i did some live demo stuff where i did some live coding stuff before but um, not extensively so um, bear with me uh, how it works today so and i designed this to be a little bit uh, how to say risky for me so i didn't prepare a lot of stuff um, i did the snowplow setup already um I think three or four weeks ago. And so I have some experience, which was good, because uh, I will definitely tell you one thing that you have to keep in mind uh, to do this. But um, I really want to give you kind of a raw experience. So because um, what I often see with these kind of setups is like, I mean, of course, if I train them and so on, I skip over parts where you may be uh, I don't know, I had to figure out something for two hours and then I, because I did it before, I just skip over it. And so uh, I think we don't have a point where we have to check out something for two hours now, uh, but I definitely want to give you um, at least um, yeah, a complete idea how, how we approach this. And because it will definitely take some time uh, to do this, so I will not spend so much time here and let's go into it. Um, so, this is what we want to do today. Um, I will post it later into, um, I think I would post the links later into the, at least like LinkedIn and also like uh, in the YouTube uh, show notes, uh, that you have everything that you need. But this is like, this is the major page that you need because this basically describes uh, how you um, start to do the installation. And so... Just a quick, um, quick words about how to set up Snowplow. So there are different ways how you can do this. So you, what always was possible since uh, Snowplow is open source from the beginning. And so you could set up Snowplow on Google Cloud Platform with their extensive documentation before. So that was uh, no problem. You could go into GCP and then by hand activate all the different kind of services that you need um, pass in the different kind of uh, software that you that needs to be deployed on some kind of um, compute engines and then make sure that everything works together but it takes some time to do this because like i mean you have to click up through different kind of stuff you have to read up a lot of stuff uh, which i mean it's it's well presented it's a really good documentation but still it takes some time um, if you are working in software development, you might came across Terraform already. And so Terraform is basically a an option to do setups uh, with config files. So it's um, there are others like uh, CloudFormation on AWS and, um, and others as well. Pulumi is there as well. And so Terraform is, I think, the, let's say, most spread agnostic approach to do that. And so you create config files and you will see them in a second, how they look like. But the good thing is like, once you define everything in a config file, you can just roll it out with two commands. And so basically it takes care to provision everything in the cloud for you. It takes care that the important pieces so that the services can speak to each other. So they need some input variables and they produce some output variables. So this, that this all comes together. Um, this is what these kind of configuration scripts also taken care of, which is really nice. So the good thing is once you have a um, Terraform script that is working and so you can deploy stuff, so you can basically, um, hey everyone, uh, you can basically deploy Snowplow every hour. <laughs> I don't know, 
200 times in different kind of DCP projects. So this is nice about these kind of uh, approaches. And so this is what we're doing today because we don't want to click through uh, Google Cloud so much. So we really want to do um, um, a good kind of testing setup. And i tell you in a second why it's a little bit of a testing setup and how you can, in the end, extend it to make it even maybe a small production setup and so on. And so not forget the third part, uh, you can always reach out uh, to Snowplow itself. So they have uh, their managed platform. Uh, so when you're here, click a, big book, a demo. And then they have their managed platform. And so they basically install everything in your infrastructure. So this is the most important thing that you need to know about Snowplow. It's like they don't do managed stuff on their servers. They do everything on your infrastructure, which is quite unique and which is quite cool. So here we go. Um, just let me put in some focus so that we don't get... Uh, bugged by any kind of messages and here we go so here's where we start so i did a little bit of prerequisites so i made sure that google cloud is installed uh, so the g cloud sdk is installed because we might need it i also created a new project and i created a new service account so this is what you need so you don't need a new project so here we are on google cloud platform so let me do this a little bit bigger um, so, of course, you can reuse uh, a project that you have, but I really, if you do a test setup, I really highly advise to use um, a new project because um, it gives you the ability to just quickly test something out and then immediately kill it afterwards when you don't want to use it anymore. And so what you need is that you need a service account. And so you can create a service account. And so this is the th only thing that I prepared because setting up a project sometimes takes a little bit in service account. So um, I don't want to share any kind of keys with you. And um, so I made the same thing. So service account you create here. So you create a name. So let's, uh, let's demo this a little bit. So you create a name. And then you have to give permissions. And this is something which you um, which can already cause some problems. So there are two ways how you approach it. I think the better way would be like uh, you create an account with very limited um, permissions. And then you basically check what kind of error message you get when you start to deploy uh, your services. Because these error messages will you tell uh, you stuff uh, that is not working because of missing permissions. The Snowplow setup needs quite some infrastructure. And so um, if you would do this approach, it would take you basically maybe half an hour, an hour to just make sure that you activate and add all the different kind of permissions later. So for this kind of demo, I did something where now a lot of InfoSec persons will cringe a lot. I created a service account that basically gets this role, which means I can do everything with this role. I will kill this project right afterwards. It can also be a way if you want to quick start with this, start with that and then start to reduce um, the different kind of uh, services that you need or maybe just delete this full service account because in the end the service account you might only need for setup. When you don't change a lot in this kind of setup, you might not need the service account anymore. But yeah, so this is how you create it. Then you create the service account and then in the end you make sure that you generate a key. And so you need a JSON key. So you have this here because this key we have to reference uh, in a second in the environment variables so that um, Snowplow can use um, your service account to basically deploy the infrastructure. And uh, so make sure, I mean, I cannot even imagine that there's still stuff out there which is using the P12 format. So usually it's, uh, it's the JSON format and uh, so you create it and you download it and make sure that you basically um, put it into your environments variables where we basically will start in a second. Other thing, make sure that you have Terraform installed. So I already did this. And I haven't installed, uh, so I, we can definitely, we ha might have to download the Eclo uh, control. So we will talk about Eclo in a second. Um, but Let's see how far we get, if we if we can even populate stuff from Igloo into our database. Let's see. But the second thing that we definitely need is we need the repository. And so this is uh, the quick start repository with different kind of quick start examples. Um, so we will, we will clone this one. And let's start with that. So let's make sure, yeah. I guess you can read most of the stuff that is basically happening here. 
Okay, we can optimize this a little bit more like this. Okay, here we go. So git clone. All right, so here we go. So this is um, the quick start repository. And so let's spend two minutes here to look what we get. So um, we get the Terraform config script. And as you can see here, so you have it for both. So you have it for, for AWS. So maybe let me do this even a little bit bigger. So uh, you have it for AWS and you have it for GCP. So these are basically, at the moment, um, the two platforms that uh, Snowplow is supporting uh, when rolling out the service. And so today we do it on Google Cloud Platform, but you can do the same stuff here on AWS as well. So let's see. Google Cloud Platform. So we have two assets that we need to um, set up today. And the two assets are basically like the Eclu server and basically this, uh, the pipeline, what we're doing. And so maybe to give you a little bit of context, so this is basically the stuff that we're doing today. So this is the full pipeline. So we have some trackers. So we will not set up trackers today because we just make sure that we set up the stuff that it's here. And um, so let's do a quick walkthrough what these different kind of things is. So um, we need um, a collecting instance. So this would be a compute instance, basically an endpoint that you can send all the data to. So it's basically just collecting the stuff. And I think it's doing a little bit um, of transformation and checking at that point, but not really so much. So this instance then write all the events into um, um, a pub stop, a pub sub topic, so the so-called raw stream. And this then gets pulled by the enrichment compute engine, which we have here. And here comes the Eclo server uh, into place. So Eclo server is basically your schema repository. So Snowplow is a schema-based tracking system. So it's not like, um, let's say, Google Analytics, which maybe most people are familiar with. So in Google Analytics, you can define whatever you want um, in an, in an, to send an event. So you can write in there what you want, and Google just picks it and just puts it in their system. So, I mean, you can put any kind of stuff in there. And, I mean, most of you know that if you can put any kind of stuff in there, any kind of stuff will land in the system. So everyone who's looking into their event data at the moment will definitely find some event where you think, well, that's weird where this is coming from. So um, this is a little bit different in a Snowplow setup. In a Snowplow setup, you explicitly define the schema that you are expecting to send. And so the schema you put into your Eclo server because with the Eclo server, you can also test the schema here and your trackers and so on. So it can basically can request your schema when you test stuff. And it also um, basically checks. So you said, okay, this event is using the schema. And so on the enrichment process, um, it will check against the schema if the schema is in the right format. And if it's not, it goes here. So then it goes on the bad stream and um, so also like a pops up topic. And if it's okay, if it's good, uh, it goes on the good stream. So you have a good stream and a bad stream. Why is this a good idea? Um, it's basically a good idea because this now gives you full control over um, where your tracking events are going. So if you send a malformed, so this is possible, if you, can, if you send a malformed request into Google Analytics, so for example, when you use the measurement protocol, um, analytics will just handle this as a silent fail. So they will just ignore the stuff and don't tell you anything. They even send you a 200 back. Um, and so they say, yeah, fine, thanks for that, but we cannot use it, but we don't tell you. And so here you get full insights of what data comes in that is basically uh, matching everything that you have defined and what kind of data comes in um, that um, is not matching what you have designed. And so the good thing is you can act on that. So you can, for example, um, on the one hand, of course, you can get some alerting, some triggering on that, but also like you can, you can create basically jobs that maybe um, clean up or map the data to the right format. If there's a lot of stuff going in there that maybe you want to have here in the good bucket. Um, so you can do this or you can just uh, write the bad stuff away and so that you can then act on this and maybe um, fix the tracking issue in the first place. So this is quite nice, especially like when you really have systems that are relying on uh, on a schema here and shouldn't break. So this is like, I mean, the big asset of Snowplow is like, 
for events that are so important for a business because automations depend on it, other stuff depends on it, it really gives you good measures to make it really bulletproof that not the bad stuff is happening here. And so for that, we need the Eclo server because we have to create the schema somewhere. And uh, so this today is not about the schema, but um, just so pipeline is basically the other stuff that you just saw here. Pipeline is creating all these things. Um, but let's start with the Eclo server. So you have two versions that you can install. And so you have the default version, which, is, which we will use today, uh, which is like a more simple version. Um, and then you have a secure version, which basically wraps your whole setup into a VPC, so virtual private cloud. Um, so I'm not an infrastructure person, so <laughs> there are other people on this planet who can explain a VPC much better. But in the end, so as far as I understand it, so basically isolates your instance uh, within your full cloud project and your full cloud instance so that you basically really can make sure that um, no other uh, services and other stuff is interfering with your setup. So, but today we do a default because it uh, takes less time and gets much quicker. And so here you can already see uh, the Terraform stuff. And so we don't do a Terraform live session today. We just do a Snowplow live session. So I don't take so much time, but that you at least get an idea. So main is basically where your full, um, where your, basically your setup uh, is. And as you can see here, so you define different kind of modules and then the modules usually is, let's say, an asset that you set up within the cloud. And as you can see here, um, this module is based on this kind of source package. And so this is coming from Snowplow. And so they provide it for, uh, for us. And so they make sure that basically the inner workings um, is fitting for our case. So you could also use a generic uh, Cloud SQL uh, module as well and then define all the variables yourself, what you want to do. And um, and so here you can see, these are basically like the parameters that we pass on into this module that we want to uh, that we want to set up. And as you can already see, so we don't write any kind of stuff right here. And this is also like a very good practice. So in the end, in the main, you just define what should be set up, but you don't uh, define with what kind of parameters you want to set up. Instead, you use some variables. So this is just for reading and maybe get inspired uh, to do your own Terraform setups, but that's it. So we don't really do stuff here. In the outputs, we define what kind of stuff um, gets been output. So in this, uh, for the Eclo server, so for example, we just get the IP address of the Eclo server. And then um, the interesting part here is like the variables define what kind of variables we put into it. So in some kind of setups, you will see that you already define a default value here. And so use this as an input variable. Uh, we this is even better set up. So in the end, we have a specific um, variables file where we now set up the variables that we want to use uh, within this setup. And so here you can see it's well documented and so on. So here we now will define all the different kind of stuff that we want to do today. And yeah, let's start here. So as you can see, this is quite easy to do. So we just have to go through all the different kind of things. Um, what we want to achieve. So um, we need a project ID. So this is basically the project ID we have here. So and that is in our case, this one here. So there are different different places where you can find it. Usually the best one is just here in the URL. So we pass this over. And so then we have to define the region where we want to deploy it because in the end, um, Google Cloud Platform and offers you different kind of regions uh, where you can deploy. And because I'm always mixing up the Google Cloud regions uh, with the AWS ones, um, I always have to look them up. It's a little bit annoying, but so, but we have them all here. So, um, so. I'm coming from, uh, so I'm coming here from Denmark, so I might use Europe North 1. Um, but so, for example, if you would be now from, I don't know, from uh, from Germany, so uh, you could use here the German instance if you are more from, more from Western uh, Europe. So here's the Belgian one and also like uh, the Netherlands one and you have one in zero. So I guess you know that you have different kind of regions where you can deploy your stuff. Uh, choose something that fits to your legal setup and fits something that is close to you. 
So we do Europe one and then defaults uh, network. So this um, is, for example, something. So right now it's default because we are using the 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 let's say the easy implementation. So we don't really create a, a virtual private cloud here. If you would create a VPC, you would have put in your VPC network and your sub network that you've created. All right, so um, we need to wi uh, whitelist basically an IP. So this really makes sense because um, you don't want to have everyone uh, basically accessing um, your databases and so on, where you put all your Snowplow stuff into it. And so we want to create, uh, we want to add our IP address there um, to basically make sure, um, yeah, that we only uh, put in, uh, that we only access this from our devices if we have a static IP. So this is important. If you don't have a static IP, it doesn't really make sense um, to define an IP here, but I have one. So I just have to see if it's activated. Let me see. Um, okay. So maybe not. No. Okay. Connecting now. Ah, I forgot one important thing. As you can see here down, no, you can't because there is my uh, window. So let's let me move here. So as you can see here, I'm working on a on a virtual machine, uh, which I'm running on um, in that case on DigitalOcean. And the reason for that is um, I have an M1 notebook, and M1 notebooks are super cool. They look nice. They're really quick. They're really fast. But they suck a little bit if you if you want to use some development resources because some stuff is not working out of the box. So people who've tried to install uh, DBT before uh, can maybe uh, know this uh, the same thing as well. So um, it's not working. And so when I was trying to do my first setup here, some Terraform modules couldn't be loaded because I was on an M1. So I was going to my usual workbench that I'm always using also for dbt projects and which is running on an external server. So, um, But I use, for example, I use the same uh, VPN here that gives me a static uh, IP address. In general, I can really recommend to do this So, because you can secure your setups a lot more when you, when you use, uh, let's say, a VPN that gives you a static IP or you already have a static IP just because of your internet connection. And because with that, you can really create very easily very restrictive fire, uh, firewall rules and by that really make sure that only people access your infrastructure from the outside because some of the databases we might access from a SQL uh, client and not um, do the stuff within the cloud. And so uh, it makes it a lot easier uh, when, you, when you secure it just with uh, yeah, your static IP address. And uh, so quickly going back to the documentation so that we can see we are still on the right track. So we are here basically now setting up our Eagle service. So we cloned the, the repository and now we need our IP address. And this is something, I mean, I'm a product manager. I always love when people think about users. And so like you need your IP address. So of course, theoretically, I know how to get my IP address, but usually I usually forget it because I don't do it every day. I'm not a sysadmin or doing DevOps. So I really love that they put in these nice little um, um, help IDs. And so, of course, here's my IP address and I can put it over. So congrats out to the person at Snowplow who basically came up with the idea for that. Um, because we, you will see the next nice link as well. So okay, then we might we need a new uh, SSH key pair. And again, um, so here again, of course, I create sometimes uh, some new SSH keys, but I always have to look it up uh, how to do this because. Um, not because I don't know it, but uh, it's just like it's not stuff which is in my common memory. And yeah, so I want to have this. And as you can also see, I'm as a root user here, which is usually not a good idea. But um, I have secured with firewall so that I can only get onto this instance. So, um, but anyway, anyone from DevOps, please don't uh, don't argue, don't shout at me. Uh, I know I can do better, but. <laughs> this is for the demo. It's all for demo purposes. Okay, so let's maybe just use the same one. 
Uh, oh, maybe not. I had it for another demo that I was doing. Um, but well, it's fine. I can just update it. All right. So this is created, and now we basically need to get this value. Yep. Um, snowplow. No, snowplow. Pop. Here we go. All right. So that's this one. Okay. So we have um, SSH keys in it because this will now be put on the server, and so we can uh, then SSH into the setup. And so um, then we set up the Eclo server and. <laughs> I will keep it like this, of course, like in a, in a production environment, I would not uh, do um, this kind of very secure um, password, but uh, I think for now it's super fine. Um, so then we need to generate an API key, which we need. And so we will just use a random UUID and here again, I didn't know that I can just put UUI here into DuckDuckGo to get a UUI, but it's just really nice. I know there are other shortcuts as well to get a uh, unique user ID. And so here we go. So we put in our API key. And da -da 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 yeah, this is something we do in a second. Um, okay, so telemetry. You can, you can tell if the Snowplow instance should provide feedback to Snowplow um, about about your setup. So they, they use it basically for, um, oh, I think they can explain it even better. So you can look it up here. Um, so I think they have some usage stat statistics that you can use. And so they are basically that they understand how you uh, set up. So what kind of instances uh, you have installed, especially like when you're in the open source thing. But um, you are totally free to say, nope, I don't want that. So you can just put faults in there. I like to share some feedback, especially like when people are so nice to provide these kind of um infrastructure and so I will now even put in my email address in a live session so but it is totally fine if you have some questions about Snowplow just write me um, an email. So SSL configuration we don't do at the moment but later you you should and could do it uh, because in the end if you if you deploy some trackers on your website so you definitely um, need uh, to have a certificate at least I think for the collector uh, so that everything is working and so but right now for testing we don't need it and we don't also don't need labels because right now in our project this is basically the only setup and so that's it already so this is like these are the parameters that you have to provide to get your eclo server running and so <laughs> i'm not so sure if we really can make it in an hour but it's totally fine so if, if not we just uh, we just set up the the eclo uh setup today and uh, we continue with the other one later but uh, i want to give you some kind of context to the other thing especially like when you when you haven't worked with with snowplow before because there are some things in between which you of course naturally cannot know because in in other analytics setups you will never I don't know, you will never know them because they are basically always under the hood. So today we do a setup basically where we just look under the hood and see what kind of elements we have to create. But let's move on. So one thing I forgot, I have to um, put uh, set up my environment variable to that my, um, that my service account credentials are basically accessible. And so we can do this here. And as far as I know, it's on root sp demo. Yeah, sp demo. And then gcp access json. So I, I have my um, service account file here. And so I just have to tell. Um, basically, in the end, Terraform will use this environment variable to um, to authorize the calls uh, against the Google API, and so we need to make sure that this is present. And so, I guess that's all we need to basically get started. Mm. 
And now comes the Terraform part. And as you can see, it's quite simple. So it's basically three, uh, three commands that you will run. You will see now these three commands, of course, will not, <laughs> not immediately run through because um, we will definitely have to switch on some APIs uh, in the Google Cloud. But this is basically we're doing based on the Terraform feedback because I don't know all the APIs uh, by hand that I have to activate. And since I'm using a new account, this is now nice for you because basically you will run most likely in the same issues. And so we first have to make sure that we end up in the right um, folder. So because if we would run it here, it would not happen because it doesn't have any kind of Terraform files. If we are in the wrong server or a wrong pass here, it basically installs the wrong stuff. So um, let's go to the right thing. So we need Terraform. We need... Um, no, not AWS, GCP, Eglo, and default. So I guess, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so what we do first is Terraform init. And so init basically checks um, through the config um, and checks what kind of modules do we need and basically loads all the mod modules for us. And as you can see, it's now pulling different kind of stuff. Yeah. It takes a little bit. No, no, it's quite quick. Okay. Mm. All right. So we have now all the packages ready. What we can now do is basically, we could immediately apply it, but good practice is like, so we first plan our thing and this is really nice so in the end um, of course you want to make sure what you basically uh, are, are adding to your Google Cloud um, project I mean in this case it's a new one it doesn't really serious stuff happen but the good thing is like we can just plan it out and so we can do um, we can do like this and then we even have it in a file as far as I can remember ah maybe it was like this okay was it out Ah, yeah, okay. No. Ah, yes, it did. Um, I just have to see where it basically put the... Oh, anyway. Okay, so we also play, created an output. Um, so, But here we, we can see basically what kind of stuff they will create. And so it would create um, a telemetry event and so a log writer, the, the SQL client... And so you can see all the kind of infrastructure that created. So this is like the compute uh, instance, uh, so compute instance manager that will be on top of all the like compute instances and so on. So if you don't understand a word, um, it's totally fine. I usually don't understand a lot of stuff too. And um, so it's if you are if you're doing more infrastructure setup and architecture setup, so it's uh, then this stuff of course means a lot more to you. Um, but um, yeah, so it's definitely worth to, to dive into it and to understand more, but um, today we don't really go into it. And so it's nice they already um, provide me with the next command. And so what I do basically now, I say, okay, I planned it out, so and I wrote it even into this uh, into this plan file, and, um, and now I can basically say I want to apply it. So because the plan looks good, and I want to apply it based on the plan that I just created. If you wouldn't use this out, what I just used before, uh, you would just check in, in with the plan statement, plan statement uh, if it looks okay, and then you would just do apply without it. And so just, just to show you how this looks like. Um, so it now takes the same configuration, and it also gives me a shorter summary of all the stuff that they are basically planning to, to add, and then say yeah why not so and here we go so this is like this is what I meant so we will now get some some stuff uh, which is missing so for example the compute engine a API hasn't been enabled so this is for example different in the Google Cloud when it comes to the AWS Cloud I think in AWS you don't really have to activate the different kind of APIs but in, in Google Cloud you usually have and if you have an old project so maybe you have already um, activated everything. So what do we need? We need compute engine. And so it's, I mean, it's not so hard to do it. Um, 
Usually it's quite quick that it recognizes it. Okay, let's enable this one. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Um, as you can see here, so of course you need, um, because we are running basically a build entity, so this is important to know. If you set this up, this is not for free. I mean, it's running server instances, but um, I, I will use five minutes to tell you a little bit. Okay, so Snowplow even invested uh, some, uh, some time to make the whole setup um, a little bit more lean and especially um, a little bit um, cheaper in the end. So maybe why this one is uh, rotating. So as far as I can remember, at least I think the enrichment process and also like the loader, so like the Postgres loader that we have here, um, I think they were data flow instances before and um, this was quite expensive. So um, to running these, I don't know. Oh, I have to remember how much cost it was creating. So it was, I don't know, 100 to 200 uh, dollars a month and so now since this is all now just compute engines and so compute engines are much uh, much cheaper at least I mean it depends on if you have a huge one of course it costs two but in this kind of setups like they, they don't really break the bank and so uh, this is quite nice kind of effort here and yeah this is the fun in a demo so um, setting up the billing account basically takes the longest time Let's see if I can show you some other stuff. Um, as you can see here, so it's basically all the same error message that we get. Uh, so it's all about the compute engine. Let's see if we can find another API. Yes, so um, we also need the IAM API. So we can already remember that, that we can do this. Uh, this is the same compute engine. So it looks like when we have this, then we are first good to go unless the building does not work. So usually my credit card should be good. So let's see. Sometimes, as we know, the reload uh, resolves everything, uh, or not. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. This is always the risk when you do this. Uh, I haven't prepared anything live demos so that you can have. Because the last time when I was doing, I cannot remember. But I mean, of course, I didn't really look into it how long it does take uh, to basically uh, set up the billing account. But what we can maybe do is because we're setting up uh, we're setting up the the Eclo server, so maybe just that you get an idea what it basically is. It's like so. Let's Eclo Central, <laughs> and so this is basically the the central repository. And just that you get an idea um, how it looks like. So uh, this is basically the central snowplow um, things. And so if you, for example, work with some standard schema, so you can always use this one, so you don't really have to set up your own. Um, you need your own if you start to work with your with some custom events or custom schema or custom context and so on. And so, but this, for example, if you say, okay, we I'm setting up a uh, so in the end, I want to. You are, it's, I'm basically using the Google Analytics enhanced e-commerce data, so which is possible. There are other uh, tutorials around how you can do this, and so then I could use just the schema um, that is already provided for us, because in the end, enhanced e-commerce has a defined schema, um, and so here you can see it. And so this is basically how a schema look like. And so this, for example, is for. Uh, for the action key, um, so everyone who has implemented enhanced e-commerce schema might be, uh, it's, I think, totally too small. So let's do it like this. Um, and so here we have, like, this is, let's say, so, okay, this is based on the on this kind of um, base schema, and so we have a description, and then this is also nice. So I mean, you can you can iterate on schemas. So this right now is version uh, 1.0, and as we can see, it hasn't changed because basically enhanced e-commerce has never changed. And so some schemas are pretty solid, uh, but some schemas, especially your custom schemas, um, might develop over time. And so then it really um, really makes it nice for you. To uh, to it so to just uh, roll out a new schema and then you basically create as you can see here also from the file name so you would create an uh, one zero one version where you can basically have a new one and this 
everyone who's coming from a uh, computer science background knows like having versions make uh, migration at least controllable because in the end you can still work against the old schema but you can then also r upgrade um, step by step the tracking code to basically um, support the new schema so it's just like that you put the new schema version into it and this is quite nice and so as you can see here we define basically just one property which is action so um, there's this uh, action uh, key and then you basically define the action in enhanced e-commerce and so um, we have an enum so these are basically like it's a list of valid um, values for these action fields and this is nice as well so sometimes you might have a property that should get just a specific uh, list of string values in this kind and this is for example how you do so and that can you can use uh, click detail detail would be like a detail page view and so on um, so this is how schemas look like and oh my god this is still working google don't let me down <laughs> I think this is basically screaming for another session. But we, we covered the most important part that you actually can start. But um, let's see. Maybe it gets resolved in the next three to five minutes. Um, then uh, we, can, we can maybe continue to do. But as you can see here, so for example, um, this repository has already a really good, um, how to say, a really good foundation. So... You see a lot of well-known um, CRMs and tools that you might use. So uh, you have you can have stuff where you can receive data from HubSpot, HubSpot events, and uh, you have Mailchimp. I mean, you can see you can also go here to check all the stuff, and um, of course you have all the Snowplow uh, standard stuff like page views and other interaction stuff that's happening. And when you start to develop your own schemas, you basically uh, will use this um, to to basically push your own schemas into this. And um, so you have a repository and so you have versions. You can even branch it. So of course, like, I mean, if it's a repository, you can create a new schema in a branch and um, maybe create a test environment that is just using the new branches. And so you can, e you can set up basically the same thing that you would set up in a usual, uh, let's say, application design that you have different kind of stages where you can use different kind of versions of a schema and then in the end you can mer just merge it into a master branch and then this master branch is your production system so you can make it very solid um, the whole setup oh no it's still running um, okay so that's quite new I never really one was running so long maybe i do i definitely will do a second session where we basically continue from here and I will do this part beforehand. But um, yeah, I thought it's a good idea to start with a new account, which I think it is because it shows you all the stuff um, that I was just showing you here. And so um, if, for example, if you're using a project that already has billing activated and so on, so then it would be really easy to, to continue to start here. Uh, so let me see what else is interesting. So maybe... Just leave the Eclo. So Eclo server is the first setup. The pipeline is the second one. So maybe we can already prepare this one because the nice thing is it basically has a lot of stuff that we can just reuse from the first setup. And I mean, if you want to create all this stuff, all the infrastructure that we're doing right now here by hand, it takes you really a bunch of time. And this, now you can really see the beauty of it. Um, so once you have your own setup already ready and so you would just want to use uh, deployed in a different project you just have to make sure to swap um, the project id here of course you have to make sure that you have different access um, keys and that's it so um, you're ready to go so it's just like once the basic values are set up um, it's totally fine to uh, set it up in a different environment and this makes it really powerful so for example you can also i mean you can also take this and then create staging environments so you have a configuration for your development stage uh, and you have a configuration for your production stage and so on so it's um, terraform is pretty powerful you can even build it on top on top that in the end you just provide development or production as an environment like as a variable here and then it takes care of everything else so uh, if you really haven't looked into Terraform, and I think in data it's not so present so far, 
Uh, but it's it's definitely if if you're looking for new stuff to learn, it's I highly can recommend to uh, to look how configuration as code or is let's say as a category or how Terraform works so far. Um, so let's fill this quickly out. Of course, so um, okay, we so this for example is like the part where we can put in our IP address that we would could get when we have our Eclos server running because then they know okay which kind of server they should pull. And of course, we have to put in our API key that we just defined here, and so it should be here. So this has to match. Uh, because if the API key doesn't match, the Eclo server is basically ignoring the request. And then, uh, so maybe this is important to know for, this is maybe a good part uh, in the last part. It's like, I was talking about, let's say, the, the kind of setup and if it should really, uh, it's really, I don't know, maybe I have issues with my credit card. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, let's hope not. Okay, but maybe let's talk a little bit about this uh, in, the f in the final run, because... This is like, this is definitely a setup for us to try out things. I mean, if you have if you have a blog where you know, okay, I don't get million of traffic, so it's it's, it's super cool to to use this already to send traffic from your blog into this. Um, why I wouldn't put it on an e-commerce website? Um, I mean, maybe it would even like let's say really a high performance. So you want to send three hundred million events into this a month. So um, then at least like. The, the part here, the, the, the final part where we have at the right now a Postgres instance, this might be not the best endpoint to send the data stuff to. So because, um, yeah, I mean, I think it, so the writing shouldn't be a problem, but uh, then working on this and reading on this might be problematic. And so what you can do is like the, the quick uh, setup basically um, initiates the Postgres loader. But um, there is also like the BigQuery loader. So let's have a quick look here. Um, Snowplow, um, BigQuery loader, here we go. So here we are. And so on the one hand, you can say, hey, I feel so good with Terraform, so I might extend it, and maybe Snowplow might extend their Terraform configuration as well. But if you say, okay, maybe it's too much, then it's totally fine to manage basically the setup like here with this one, and then in the end just set up the BigQuery loader, uh, basically um, manual in your in your cloud infrastructure as well. And so um, here you have, here you basically have the, the different kind of infrastructure that you have to do. So this is like the documentation where you have to go. And based on this documentation, you can then easily set up the new BigQuery loader. And the BigQuery loader then, um, I mean, it's basically just like swapping this one here out and then you define a BigQuery endpoint. And so then you write, uh, I think maybe even a stream, I don't know, might be. Uh, then you write uh, the data immediately into, into BigQuery and which basically, if you really have high volume, uh, is a better endpoint. So I will definitely make a video about this in the future because this is something I will do as well. And um, the good thing is now, because um, I think the billing might be still, yeah, it's still spinning. Maybe there's really like an issue. I don't know. Could check my phone. I won't do now. Um, so anyway, um, I already have prepared this whole setup as a video series as well. And so there you can see where we can do the next steps. Um, but for me, this session today was mostly really like to, on the one hand, show you how, how you do this with Terraforms. And uh, on the other hand, to basically give you an idea how S Snowplow works under the hood. And, um, and so I did the whole setup now two times. And it's really something that, it's easily doable in an hour. I mean, in the end, it's not a competition. So, it, of course, there could be scenarios where it could be even quicker. But what I just want to tell you is, like, it's not really so hard to do it. And um, and as you can see, it doesn't really require so much, um, let's say, engineering or DevOps skills to do it, basically. like Because at the moment, we are struggling on something totally mundane. So, like, just activate billing, which... Uh, uh, sometimes billing is the complicated part. But um, so once the billing is activated, the only thing that we have to do is like, we just have to activate all the APIs. So enabling them here, and that's it. So uh, once this is done, so then the setup will run. And so it will then give you the IP address of the uh, of the um, Eclo instance. And then uh, you put in your IP address and... Um, 
then of course like you put in your your ip address here for access to the database as well and that's it then you run the second script the second setup script and then your pipeline is ready and so then you basically can already um send some events into it the only thing is like you have to seed your uh, eclo server with uh with some schemas but let's quickly uh show you where this is so this is just step four here and um, this is also pretty straightforward so i mean you clone uh, the eclo central the one that i just showed and then you use uh, the equal uh, eclo uh, ctl which is like their the sdk it's just a, a, a java file that you can download and then you just push it into it so that's it it takes i don't know 10 seconds and then you have seeded it with the standard um schemas that from here and then um setting up the pipeline and then you're ready so i would say half an hour 45 minutes and then you have some sample um events that you can just test against it and then you immediately see the stuff in your database i mean this is really like this is this is a little bit sad that i couldn't show it today because it's a really nice moment where you can just i mean the setup is ready in 40 minutes and then you can just go into your console send this in there and it's immediately in the database so it immediately has flown through the whole pipeline and um because this is already prepared so you will not misconfigure it um so it will end up in the in the good pipeline and they also i think they also have an example Maybe they had one where you could send some bad data as well. Okay. Uh, anyway, I mean, to sending bad data is pretty easy. You just, ah, yeah, okay. So, um, and this is what it is. So in the end, um, then you can already go into it and then you can already query your good and your bad data. And so um, this is really straightforward. So I think the major reason what you should take away from this today is like, if you have some time, I don't know. I know we, uh, no one has time, and so on. But maybe really block out a, a Friday for you and and try to set it up. Especially like if you're really experimenting a little bit, thinking about different kind of tracking setups. I mean, it doesn't really have to be that you immediately want to use Snowplow for some kind of thing. But the good thing about Snowplow is basically Snowplow is the system that is showing you basically how other systems like Segment, Rudder Stack, and so on, um, how they work under the hood. And since Snowplow is around for, I think now, 10 years, um, they have really, really a lot of documentation and they show you a lot of stuff, what is really working. For me, it was always really cool because in the end, um, I use it often really like for smaller, my personal setups, just to learn how it works. But it helped me to understand so much how other tracking systems or other pipeline, or basically data collection pipelines are working um, because here I could see every kind of part. And so this, uh, because in the end, Google Analytics is, I mean, of course they will use different kind of assets in between, but the whole thing in itself is pretty much the same. So they collect stuff, they enrich stuff. They, I, mean, they might, I guess they will have an aggregation stuff in there in between, maybe behind here. But this is basically like, I'm pretty sure how the GA pipeline will look like in the end. Uh, because this is basically how most data collection pipelines are built. I mean, of course, everyone is basically using a little bit of different, um, let's say, assets here. So, of course, here this is all um, Snowplow is written in Scala. And so this is running basically a Scala application uh, on a compute engine. And you can write the whole stuff with Python. And so you, maybe you can do crazy stuff with Cloud Run. Uh, so, but in the end, the assets is always the same. So you have some collection. You often have some enrichment or at least some cleaning and transforming. And then you have a storage where you put the stuff. And this storage should be so intelligent, at least like the loaders, have to make sure that they basically uh, can handle schema changes. So this is the important part. I mean, of course, like when there's a schema in, in BigQuery, you cannot just pass data into it that has a different schema. And so that's it. And so let's see how the billing is doing. Oh, no. It's not... So <laughs> okay. It might be that it was triggering uh, my phone that I had to t say, yeah, you can actually use it and I of course when I do live demo I switch off my phone so I don't see it anyway you will not have problems with your billing account as I am having it so this today is on Google for some reasons they have a problem here but anyway I still hope uh, this whole thing was still um, valuable for you and still help you to get an idea how Snowplow works and 
Um, I'm planning a lot of snowplow content um, in the next, let's say, let, let's put it like six to eight weeks because, of course, it takes some time to produce it, but I have prepared some stuff. And the most important thing that you can already, uh, will already get early on next week uh, is basically I um, did a session with uh, Paul Bukok, which is a leading engineer at Snowplow, and we discussed the whole setup here. And he provides a lot of context, and I learned a lot of stuff from this session. And so I, um, I think I will put it live on Monday or on Tuesday. And so this is, this is an hour video where we basically, we will not do a live setup, but we will basically discuss the whole setup. And really, he provides so much context to stuff, which is really, really interesting, really, really good. I learned a lot of stuff in this session. I think you will learn too. And so, um, yeah, uh, I hope this was useful. If you want to talk with someone about Snowplow, discussing where it fits, where not, always ping me. Um, you can also always write to the Snowplow people. They are very, very nice people uh, and always uh, very keen on to discuss things um, wherever you meet them. So they have a community. You can ping them on LinkedIn. But you can also just ping me and I will have we will have a nice snowplow call. And so that's it. Um, I wish everyone a good, um, good weekend. And yeah, see you for the next live session. Let's see what we do then. <laughs> have a good day.